This 1.6 Focus ain't a 1.6 Focus. It's a one litre EcoBoost. <sighs>Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to this video. Now, today we're gonna to have a look at one of my new purchases. It's a vehicle that I bought in, in stock to put on for retail. Now, the car in question is a Ford Focus. I bought this car a pack of three, if you like, so I've got three cars in the deal uh, from a friend of mine who's a trader. He bought it in, basically on his rounds, uh, and he obviously traded it on to myself because he knows I'm sort of after stock at the moment. Three vehicles in question we bought was a little Renault Clio, a Ford Mondeo, and the Ford Focus we're looking at today. Now, it's a 2012 plate Ford Focus, very bright thing. It's a Mark III Focus. It's done 90,000 miles. It's pretty clean, and I'm told it's a 1.6 petrol, or at least that's what he's told me it was. It's a 1.6 petrol, HBI clear. It looks an all right thing. However, there is a problem with this car. Let me just show you what I mean. So let's go have a look around it, go for a drive in it, and I'll explain to you what the issue is with this Ford Focus. Okay guys, here it is. Nice little Ford Focus. Um, in the face of it, it actually looks a really decent car. I've had it validated, I've just had it brought back. We've got two keys of it, we've got a logbook, like I said, it's HBI clear. It looks pretty decent, with 90,000 miles on, it looks like the ideal car that I want on this pitch. So have a quick look round it, like I said, it's a nice blue colour. We've got the uh, matching Lansail tyres all round as well. They're all pretty decent. So they're all like sort of six, seven or eight mils, pretty new. They've been put on recently. The same with the discs, they are a bit rusty guys, but my eagle eye can tell you that those discs are pretty new. It's just been stood obviously. Uh, new pads as well. So you know, there's been a bit of money thrown at it recently. It's pretty straight along the side. There is a very slight scratch there. It's probably the worst bit on the entire car. But overall for a car, what, that's 12, 13 years old, I can't really really complain for that to be honest again matching Lansale tyre on the back all around it's just a nice bright car and the sort of thing that I want on the pitch could do with a new number plate we'll get that sorted clean that on this side as well again Lancel's all around matching it's just a nice car we're just going to give it a quick buff up in a minute really that's all they want to make it look absolutely gleaming I'm very impressed with this car and we've already had interest on it. We've had people turn up asking about it. Like I said, we haven't even made a decision of what we're doing with it yet and what the price is. But before we do that, we have to address some a problem. Um, I'll just quickly show you inside, actually. Uh, it says nice and clean inside. It's just been come back from the valet. It's had an internal valet. So we've got a little tiny mark in the seat there. But over than that, really, it ain't too bad. Still need to dry out a little bit. Still a little bit moist, shall we say. But uh, nice interior. Very modern, this shape, Focus. It's still, even today, 12, 13 years on. Still looks a really nice modern car. So what's the problem with it? It looks a bright thing. It looks well inside. Why am I complaining about this purchase? Well, when the car got dropped off, I would say we're impressed with it, but when I went to start it, I had an issue. I'll just show you what that issue is. Make sure it's not in gear. I turned the key to be greeted by this noise that horrible noise of a three cylinder engine starting up and revving up yes you've guessed it by now this 1.6 focus ain't a 1.6 focus it's a one litre eco boost and there it is guys the horrible one litre eco boost now we had a Fiesta on recently uh, on the channel, which we bought in part exchange again. Had a bit more miles than this one, to be fair. Um, I was a little bit critical of it, and uh, I got quite a bit of response to it, to be fair. Uh, some people sort of agreed with me that the engines are not very good, uh, and other people who had them for a long time and swore by them and thought they were quite decent. Uh, it is a bit of a contentious issue, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. So. I've already mentioned this time over before, um, those of you who have seen the Fiesta video, these do suffer with a lot of problems, in particular turbochargers can pack up or have problems with them in the vac pumps on the right there, they get problems mainly with the wet belt that's the problem with them, uh, so they have a cam belt that's submerged in oil, uh, it has a specialist type of oil you have to use in them, if you use the wrong oil they degrade very quickly and then they block all everything up and then it can cause basically bad oil consumption problems or in worst case scenario it can actually blow the engine up because they get all blocked up in the oil pump and the strainer in 
the sump like I said I've mentioned it many times before they also early ones like this suffered with coolant problems water pumps leaked uh, water pipes leaked down there they were recalled at one point most of them have been fixed but on occasion you find the odd one they're just not a particularly reliable engine you're certainly not as reliable as the 1.6 petrol I think that's fair to say uh, so yeah I was a bit disappointed when it had the one litre eco boost in um, I mean when he said it was a 1.6 he hadn't actually seen the car in fairness to him he just sort of one of his drivers had picked it up and just said oh, I think it's a 1.6 so yeah fine he should have checked it but also I HPI'd it as well I mean, at my end because obviously I might double check make sure and even I didn't look to see on the HPI what engine size was I just checked to see if it was clear so really it's both our faults however it's not the end of the world but at the end of the day we've only paid 1500 quid for that car 1500 quid for an HPI clear Ford Focus on a 12 plate later shape model is 1500 quid I cannot complain even if it's got a one liter eco boost in if you cannot make money out of this car if I can't make money out of this car then I am doing something wrong even if we don't retail it we are if I can't make money out of that I need to pack up because that is like taking candy from a baby it, it, it will do more than that in an auction I could trade that on in the trade there'll be other dealers who are willing to have a go at that and retail it there's money in this car regardless easy peasy no, I'm not worried about making money so I suppose really if I'd known it was a 1 litre eco boost I might not have bought it so in reality I suppose the situations work quite well in the end but anyway I say we can't lose on the car a 1500 quid bargain even with that engine in which I'm not a great fan of but what to do with it next because it, it's a bit of a predicament really because unlike the Fiesta which is a bit more upon the miles which I wasn't too keen on uh, retailing this one's got a lot less miles on it and it's a focus it we've already had people sniffing around it asking about it and it's starting to sway my decision what to do with it but before we make a decision on it I've only driven it around here it's been to the valleters and back but I haven't driven it properly yet so I think we need to get a set of trade plates in it and go for a drive in it and go from there assess it and see what we're going to do with it and also guys let me just quickly mention about today's channel sponsor uh, vehicle score vehicle score guys have been sponsoring the channel for a month or two now a absolute fantastic service it's completely free to use all you've got to do is go on to vehiclescore.co.uk click on that website and you can actually get a free score on your car type in any registration number you like pop that in and you'll get a score check on it so sort of one to 999 brilliant service you get loads of free information such as like estimated values lifespan of the car so it'll tell you the estimated mileage left in it working out from previous cars what the lifespan is and how long the vehicle will last on average for working out from cars that have been scrapped etc it's got really useful information like i said the service is completely free to use you don't have to, to sign up or anything like that to use it just type your reg in and you can use it but crucially as well they've also got their score checks as well the vehicle salvage report and their ultimate report uh, these are fantastic guys because you want to have a salvage always checked on it costs like less than three pounds and you also get a discount as well car uk viewers which i'll mention in a sec but like i said less than the price of a cup of coffee you can get your car searched make sure it's never been an uninsured write-off a standard hpi won't cover you if a car's been unrecorded so if it's been for an insurance company great it'll tell you if it's a cat n or a cat s or a cat d or a cat c or whatever but it won't tell you if it's been unrecorded if it's not gone for the insurance company and it's ended up in a salvage auction you won't find out and one in nine vehicles that are put through on vehicle score salvage checks come back as being an uninsured loss so basically the vehicle has been involved in an accident which otherwise would have been written off but it wasn't recorded so it's a great service to use it's like it's less than a few quid it gives you peace of mind it also gives you all sorts of checks as well stolen checks as well and if it's been exported and if you want all the bells and whistles you've got the ultimate check ultimate check's brilliant that includes all the bits you get on the salvage check plus you're getting a standard hpi attached to it so you are then looking up the insurance database as well the vcar register so if it has been recorded by an insurance company you can find out and crucially as well finance checks it's one in eight cars uh, on vehicle score have got finance outstanding on them it's a problem a lot of cars unfortunately people don't pay the loans off on them or high purchase or they've got log book loans on them i used to see it a lot in my over my, one of my previous businesses a lot of cars were still outstanding finance and don't just think it's just expensive cars it can be cheap cars as well so you know even you're buying a 500 pound car or a 50 000 pound car make sure you get it properly checked out guys the car uk viewers get 15 percent off any vehicle score product so like i said just type in car uk 15 links in the description guys give them a check out like i said the basic service is free just hop on there and give them a try so anyway let's rig up the tray plates and go for a quick drive in this focus right leave this uh 
seat cover in place because the seats are still trying to dry out. Oh, shivers down my spine when that three cylinder kicks in. Anyway, let's see what it's like. I've been told by the person who's driven it prior to me, it drives all right. And I've driven a lot of these Eco Boosts because they still fit them today. And in fairness, when they drive right, performance wise, they are very, very good. When I criticize them or people criticize their reliability, it's well, purely on the reliability. It's not on the performance. What's not to like about a car that's got a turbo on it that does 60 to the gallon, is cheap to tax, and, and you know you can't really fault it that the actual the idea of what they're trying to do is brilliant you know low emissions cheap road tax got a bit of oomph in it great on fuel brilliant it's just a reliability situation okay in second gear put my foot down shoot off turbo kicks in about two and a half thousand rpm and it just pulls you along nicely you've got that nice Chain, you've got that nice sort of mix up between that three cylinder which you're trying to rev happy and then all of a sudden the turbo kicks in and then just gives you that sort of extra leg it's actually pulling really well smooth nice smooth gear chains little five speed manual so far so good it's actually pulling really nice the clutch is nice and balanced as well we've got a nice bike point into fifth gear now we're doing a thousand rpm and we're just tootling around just perfectly throw it into this roundabout now and it's quite smooth actually we've got no knocks or bangs or anything like that we've not got no sort of wandering in the road try the brakes i'm not coming to zebra crossing you're welcome braking fine no squeaks no noises anything like that set off again pulling off really well into second foot down turbo whoa look at that there pure power can't fault it it's doing everything but it should it's driving exactly like my colleague said spot on so the question is what to do with this eco boost because everything's right about it the car looks nice it's, it's a focus not a fiesta so it's a better seller it's got the right mileage on it for what i want it's going to be priced sensibly it's running perfectly it's got good history as well guys it's got service history with this you know everything's right it's a nice looking presentable car and if i was going to retail one of these to be fair this is probably one of the first i've had in a long time where i actually genuinely would have a go at retailing it and what's that going to look like? Well, to be honest with you, from what I can see so far and what I've driven, it doesn't really want a lot of money spending on this. Someone's put all new tyres on it. It's had this and pads on it recently. It's got good service history. It's just so ready to put a sign in the window and put up for sale. We've even validated it because we wanted to validate it regardless anyway, because even if we didn't go on with it, we'd still want to clean it for the sake of a trade valet. It was worth doing just to smarten it up. But if I am going to do this car, if I am going to do the unthinkable and retail this car, I've got to do one thing to this car. I've got to take that sump off. I know these cars suffer with oil pressure problems. That is their biggest problem. People put the wrong oil in them. And even if they don't put the right oil in them, they still suffer with the belts degrading over time. So you need to check that out because this car may be on its original engine. It may not be. We just, ultimately, we're not gonna know. And the belts are supposed to last 150,000 miles. Yeah. I mean, Ford claim they do, to be honest with you. I don't think they will last that long, even if you service them correctly and put the correct oil in. I just can't see them lasting that long. But we don't know the history of this car, the belts, looks like we've got service history, doesn't mean it's the original engine. We just don't know. So I think the best thing to do, if you're gonna, and I would recommend this to anyone, is you need to get the sump off these cars if you're gonna buy one of these. Or if you have everyone serviced, get that strainer in the sump, the oil pump, cleaned out because that's where all the debris of the belt ends up in the strainer, in the gauze of it, and it basically all clogs up. I've shown it before in a Fiesta video when you clean them out, it's horrible. All the sludge and stuff comes out, but if you catch them early and you get them cleaned out, you suffer, you don't get any of those oil pressure problems that build up. And for peace of mind, if I'm gonna retail one of these, regardless of how well this drives, I'm gonna do that job. Even though it's a bit of a pain in the arse to do, because you've got to take all the exhaust out of the way and the catalytic converter and stuff. But for me, if I'm gonna retail it, it's just gotta be done. Now in my last Fiesta video, as I pointed out, a lot of people agreed with me about the reliability of this engine. There was also a lot of other people who saw it from the other perspective. They'd own one of these and had these for a while and they've been absolutely perfect for them, had no issues whatsoever. And that's great. I don't want people to have an unreliable car. I'm not criticizing this because it's easy to do. I'm just giving my opinion on what my experiences are running a garage for many years and dealing with these cars. We used to see these a lot, you know, a lot. These were 
problematic and I don't say it loosely because I'm just critical of Fords or anything like that I love Fords I like these engines when they drive well like this one it drives perfect I like this car but I can't then put my hand on heart and say to someone that it's a more reliable or just reliable as the 1.6 petrol it just isn't however if it drives well like this running well I've just got to retail it there's no two ways about it regardless of what my opinion is of this engine I've just got to be retail it. It's going to have to be done. I'm going to have to do a proper job of it, get it serviced correctly, get that strainer cleaned out, and go on with it. Would I buy one? No, I wouldn't buy one litre Eco Boost. Not for a loved one. I'd go and get the one six. However, if someone else out there wants to buy it, I will do my best to make sure this is the best possible one at the best possible price. That's all I can do. So I am going to retail this car. I may regret it because I've got to give a warranty with this car. I've got to stand by it for a period of time. But I'm willing to give it a go. I'm going to try. And maybe if we retail this one and it's actually all right and we don't have any problems with it and it doesn't come back and bite us, I possibly even change my opinion. Hmm, I don't know, sure about that. So, what do I think we'll get for this Eco Boost Ford Focus? Well, having a quick look online, it's looking roughly at around sort of 35, 3600 quid mark. I think, to be honest with you, I'm just going to plonk it up at £3,495. I think it's worth that all day long. You could get a little bit more for it. The book, if you like, the cap guide is saying it's worth a bit more. But we're starting to compete then with 1.6 petrols and stuff like that. I would just rather plonk it at my limit. I'm selling cars sort of under three and a half grand. And it does fit into that price bracket. You could get maybe £36, £37.95 for it. But... I'll just plonk it at 3,500 quid. There's plenty of money in it. I'm probably going to have to still spend a little bit on it in prep. I know it's had new tyres and brakes and all that, and it's driving mint. But we're obviously going to spend it. We're going to have to have oil change done and service and stuff like that. And there'll probably be something else we'll find along the way. General prep, if we call it that. That's what we're going to do with this car, guys. We are going to retail it. Let's see if I regret it. I will cover this in a part two, so when we sell this car, which probably won't take that long to be honest, because we've already had a lot of interest in it and I hadn't even put the price board in the window, um, I will cover it again and I'll show you what we've done to it. I'll show you us actually taking the uh, sump apart and the strain on and can show you what I mean. Uh, hopefully the uh, belt's in good order. If it doesn't, that's going to be a problem because that's quite expensive to do, but we'll see. We'll have a look in our next video, so make sure you check that out, the part two of the one litre Focus. So, uh, thank you for watching this video guys make sure you check out vehicle score our channel sponsor uh, you can get uh, discount codes as well car uk 15 to get 15 percent off any of those two checks you can check out vehicle score in the link description and of course the promo code as well and don't forget the standard service they offer is completely free also please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and i will see you all guys in the next video